This chapter is about the Laplacian smooth modifier. And there's a big difference between the normal smooth modifier and the Laplacian smooth modifier because the normal smooth modifier will just smooth your entire surface, while the Laplacian will try to keep your topology but only sort of remove noise. So let's have a look at the factors or the settings of the Laplacian smooth. Right now, you can see here, this has a repeat of 1 and a factor of 100. While this here has a repeat of 100 and a factor of 1. If you have a larger mesh, or let me say a high poly mesh, the Laplacian smooth will take a while until it's calculated, which is why I have prepared these examples. So let's have a look at the major difference. This is repeat 1, factor 100, so the end product should be the same, but it's not. The factor will determine how much each vertex is allowed to be displaced, basically. And the repeat will tell how often the Laplacian smooth is going to go over your mesh. Now, if you imagine that you have a tiny groove here in the mouth, and the first time it will get a little bit more smooth. Second time with a repeat, it will get a little more smooth and so on. So after a while it will be gone. Whereas if you only have one smooth iteration, but you have a large factor, it will sp still smoothen your mesh a lot more, but it will preserve your topology a lot better than if you just set the iteration up. Let's have a look at the original face. This is it. And you can see this is basically the noise that we managed to remove with the smooth modifier. And here we have an exaggeration. I put the repeat up to 100 and the factor up to 5. And that basically leaves us with a Jason something, I don't know, that guy from Friday 13th. Anyways, let's have a look at another example. For example, the border here. This is what this wine glass looks like without the smooth modifier. It's just a regular shape. And let me reset those values. Okay, so if you have a factor of zero, obviously nothing is happening. Because, well, 25 times zero is still zero. But if I increase the factor, you can see this turns into kind of a champagne glass. And that is because it's getting smooth. You see this bulge here? It gets smooth, so it's more of a straight line. So that's kind of a cool effect. You can morph your glass. There's a more interesting effect that I can demonstrate with this glass. It's the border settings. The border only applies to vertices that are, you guessed it, at the border. So they don't have any connections to another side. So this one would be the only one at a border right here because it's down here, it's kind of closed. So if I now increase or decrease the border, you can see I'm just changing the rim of the glass, nothing else. So that's basically what the border factor is for, is how much the border gets, well, let's say distorted, because it's not really smoothing. Actually, it's smoothing if you have positive value, but distorting if you have negative values. And with that, you can just, well, morph your glasses. Now there is a preserve volume button here, and by default it's on. And if I now increase this, you can see the glass growing. And maybe you would expect the preserve volume not to grow your glass. But this is due to it's getting more narrow up here. So there's if you imagine there's a lot of water in this um, bulgy glass, and you make it more narrow, it should hold less water. But um, Blender doesn't know that the water only goes up here. So it tries to preserve the volume all over the mesh and I have to say to you this actually looks like it's getting a lot bigger but well that happens now you can limit this to a vertex group of course this group will have only the top vertices it does not affect the stem so if I now change this you might be surprised that the stem is moving as well the, let's say the foot here that is because of the preserve volume the preserve volume will change everything, but you may notice there is no smoothing going on down here. It just gets scaled. So if I choose to disable the preserve volume, then it will not get altered at all. 
And there's another very interesting effect you can achieve with the Laplacian Smooth. This is a character I've modeled and rigged a little while back. And right now it does not have the Laplacian Smooth. But if I enable it, it becomes kind of distorted. And that happens when you set the factor to a negative value. So if I repeat this process, it will get, of course, a lot more prominent. Now, what the inverse factor does, it's basically, it's bulging it out. If you imagine that you have a lot of bumps, the smooth modifier will sort of, or smoothen it by, let's say, polishing. I mean, if you polish something, you will get less surface. Maybe just a tiny bit less, but there's less surface. No way that you can polish something, and then you have a bigger surface than before. Now, if you, of course, do the opposite, your surface will actually get bigger. And that means, that you can characterize, I guess, well, you can make a caricature out of your models. And um, of course, the more roundish and uh, those models are, the better the modifier will work in this case. But you can, of course, always limit it to vertex groups. Now, one thing I should mention also is, if you have a very high poly mesh, you might want to be careful with the repeats. Not only do the repeats really do something weird to your mesh, but also they will take a lot longer to calculate. So if you want a lot of smoothing, turn up the factor a lot, but not the repeats. So finally, there's one last option that's here. That's the normalize option. The normalize means your modifier is now independent of face size. And you can see turning on the normalized is usually a good idea. Because if you have the normalized off, then smaller faces will get distorted more than bigger faces. And if you have a lot of different face sizes, you will get this. So usually leave that on and yeah, have fun distorting. Or if you're more into 3D scanning, have fun smoothing your mesh.